Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Now, here's your host, Ed Cohen. This is Ed in San Diego, and you're on Global TV Talk Show, a unit of globalbusinessnews.net, which has been broadcasting since 03. Google Analytics says that we've attracted 1.2 million uh, what they call audience page views. But really the bulk of all this action has been since COVID hit about 22 months ago, where we decided to become TV hosts. And honored today to have Mark Colo from findneurohealth.org, uh, which is a, it's a helpful charity. It's a 501c3, but uh, it's not for research, it's for helping people, right, Mark? It is, Ed, you're exactly right. Uh, a lot of the foundations in our industry uh, focus strictly on finding a cure. And although that's important, there's a lot of other transitional concerns that come up along the way. You know, if, if an individual gets uh, a, a serious enough uh, di a disease, in fact, I spoke to a young lady this morning and her, I spoke to her about a month ago, and I spoke to her again this morning and her voice had changed. And I said, do you have a cold? And she said, no. I said, well, you sound a little different. She said, well, I just was diagnosed with ALS. Mm. And ALS is one of the hardest ones to go through. I'm mean, just difficult. Yeah. So a lot of times people will lose not only their health, they'll lose their job because they can no longer per per perform and bring in an income. And then it gets real tricky and dicey from there. I mean, uh, they, they really what they really need is someone that can coach them through it you know, and, and tell them that there's still a life ahead of you. There's still good, good things to come. So uh, teaching the then, family, helping the family. Not helping just the family. family. Yeah, helping the other members. Sure. So most of what we do is non-medical related services. We just help, we look at where they're at. We see what we can do to help them. And this perimeter of hope right here, as you see up here on the top right of my image, um, these are the areas that we help with. Uh, so there are six of them. Uh, but as of lately, it's been very, it's been very diff difficult for us to keep on top of all six of these. Uh, it's just, it's so much data and information you need to have for each, and just one of these. So we're focusing, or shifting a little bit, Ed, our position. We're going to focus a little more on housing, relocation, real estate services. So then we're going to focus more on that. We have these other pieces together in these, in these other uh, hexagons, uh, but but we, uh, we, we just need to define our story and, 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 and work with our strengths right now. Well, we're so. gonna circle back to you. Uh, so it's findneurohealth.org. Uh, and I've had the privilege of uh, hosting what I call now medical TV talk shows. Mark has gotten some of the research scientists that he's uh, been affiliated with uh, to come on our show. And we have a one-on-one -on -one uh, what I call an interface uh, about the vaccine or about uh, the, you know, how the vaccines work uh, or should work and about MS. And soon we're going to have somebody from ALS, that guy whose name I sent you uh, yesterday. And uh, we also had Howard, Dr. Howard uh, Federoff, which, which has a lot to do with the, the brain and how it's, uh, how it's, how Alzheimer is impacting the brain or, or what's happening in the brain that either blocks uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's from further developing, as well as uh, the, the reverse. It's really fascinating stuff. And what I love about it, Mark, and what the feedback I'm getting from our audience, which is all business people, nothing to do with medicine, it's all in plain English and they can get it. You know, it's easy to understand what's going on. So, that's cool. Very cool. Our very special guest today is Mark Victor Hansen, and many of you already know this man. He's uh, the co-author of uh, Chicken Soup, the series of Chicken Soup books for the soul or for the pets or for everybody else. Chicken Soup is great. I have some cans right over here, and I have it for lunch. Of course, somebody with my name, I grew up with it since I was like one, I guess. But... Uh, Let's welcome Mark. Thank you very much for being on this program. This is a, a world famous guy on our little show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, so Ed. I'm, Thank you, Mark. I, and, and I just yeah. want to hit on just the ALS. It's a, 
yeah, dastardly thanks. disease that that uh, erodes the body usually from the bottom up. Our when I lived in uh, Newport Beach, California, and I live in Scottsdale. Our minister had seventeen thousand people, and she somehow got it. and And I watched her body disintegrate, and it is painful. Mm-hmm. And there, at the moment, it has no cure, wow. and, and unless Mark knows of some cure, because it just and it does put you out of work. It takes your job away. It takes your life away. It takes your family. And it, and it basically kills your love. So whatever we got to do to prevent those kind of diseases uh, is the right thing to do. Yeah, we need more public awareness of the, of this, especially that disease. That's so, it. Mark, I, I want to ask you a couple sure. of questions. Uh, we we want to, of course, have a, an interchange here, uh, free flowing as much as possible. So, but the structure is is that I want to learn more about your approach to, uh, com- well, I guess communicating is the easiest word, but it doesn't say enough. I think what I heard today on that, uh, on those uh, videos that I was listening to or watching and doing my research prep for this, uh, you talked about energy orbit, all right? The, uh, you talked about people who have that and how you uh, understand that and apply the uh, attributes of that to your own work, uh, creating a positive field uh, in your aura. <laughs> but what you try to do to help your audience uh, arise uh, to that is, um, and I find this really cool and, and interesting, to uh, bring in faith, to make the connection from here to there, and internalizing it all too. So I'm going to stop talking. I'd like you to uh, take take this better and tell our audience exactly how you um, have taught large groups as well as CEOs about how to think um, better about themselves and about what they're trying to do to help their people. Well, boy, that is a compounded question. So I'll do a compounded answer if you don't mind, which is okay with me. And hopefully it'll be articulate. But consciousness makes our decision imploded into subconscious, which makes a provision, which goes out into superconscious, which goes to uh, God conscious, which is sort of like an amazing thing that very few people understand at all. But there's only one mind, there's only one intelligence, and, and all that exists in the universe. Einstein taught it as E equals MC squared. And when I was getting in graduate school, I was with Bucky Fuller, Einstein's best student, arguably. And uh, what, what Fuller would say is that, uh, you know, E is all the energy of physical universe, either as mad or hard stuff like your bones or this table or this chair or ambient is radiant. So, and what happens is that the higher you go in consciousness, which is run by faith, the easier it is. So, when you decide what it is you want, what we've written in this brand new book called Ask, which is rocking and selling well, thank God, is a bridge from your dreams, your destiny. Crystal and I believe that absolutely everybody was coded at Mark at birth, at DNA and RNA, at birth with a destiny, and it's all vibrational. Now, everything you do is vibrational. Your eyes are vibration, your ears are a vibration, right? I'm wearing hearing aids, I'm wearing glasses to change your vibration so I can still see stuff. But at a simplistic level for a CEO or a, anybody in the C-suite, if they will figure out what they want and then put it in writing, there's all spiritual law and faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. But what, you know, Bob Proctor and I have been teaching, you know, for 50 years is you write on a little, three, figure out what you want. And then a three by five card, you write in his mind, but it says, I'm so happy and thankful that I have, and in my case, because I'm selling books, I've sold over a million books by whatever the date, by doing, and in this case, podcast, 400 podcasts, and then I've got it signed, my wife's got it signed, our publisher's got it signed, and in our case, you look at it four times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and most importantly, before you go to sleep, because what happens is all of us have massive distractions all day long, all life long, and what happens is, and I, I don't know whether this would be a cure for anybody, but it's what, what you think about comes about and your state of mind creates your state of result. So let me just, I'm finishing a book about the biggest black minister ever. He had 20 million followers. His name was Reverend Ike. He had 20 Rolls Royces. He helped me get out of bankruptcy in 1974 when I went to his church in Harlem. I went to Norman Vincent Peale in the morning and then these two guys said, 
let's go see River Lake for a kick. And I thought, that's not exactly where I think we're supposed to go. But they were totally welcoming, loving. He hit my electric spark plug. We befriended each other, did a lot, a lot, a lot together while he was alive. And now I'm, my wife and I are just finishing his biography called From Wishes to Riches because he was born in 1935 in the South and being black and didn't work very well. But he said, you got to demonstrate what your truth is and it's inside out. It's what is your, because you're always attracting or repelling stuff. And at money level, you're either attracting money or repelling it. And I was repelling it, obviously. And then I learned how to attract it and did well. Attracted booksellers or rejected them. Attract health or reject it. Attract good relationships or reject it. And I'll just do this story. Yesterday, I interviewed a guy named uh, Reverend Wynn, who was his lead singer and, and a musician and just a phenomenal guy. But he wanted the biggest house in Medford Stuyvesant. And if you know New York, that's about as extraordinary as it gets. 21 room house. And Robert Ike says, Look, we practice at this church. That you got to demonstrate. I've demonstrated, uh, you know, all these Rolls Royces and seven residencies and made a lot of people rich, guys like Mark Victor Hansen. You go do it. Long story very short, this guy goes out to the house gets there the guy said you could never afford this house to uh jimmy wins and all of a sudden jimmy had just talked to the lord a second ago and said lord you gotta go to this house with me and he's ready to walk away a woman comes out the front door and says jimmy wins and he looks and says who in the hell is that he says oh i went to school with you i'm cecilia jones this is my dad i get goosebumps to tell you this that's a cool story <laughs> so for 18 years he was a caretaker of the best house in bedford stuyvesant the guy wrote in his will, I only want one person to have this after I'm dead. And that's Jimmy wins at $350,000. Well, Jimmy just had a had to uh, sign the uh, deed over to his daughter, Yolanda, who also is a dear friend of mine. And amazing, the house yesterday was appraised for $7.5 million. Now, you, you got to say, well, wait a second, how did that work? Well, he kept, he owned it and worked on it for 18 years, took care of everything in the house kept seeing him as, as owning the house and then it came to pass. And, and that may have been more answer than you wanted, but hopefully it's the logic box fits. So uh, it's a great story and thank you for sharing yeah. that. So but when you say uh, as part of your um, thing that I heard this morning uh, in these uh, on, on the podcast of, um, and I can't remember everything I heard now, but it, it was a combination of, uh, of mind, uh, heart, uh, spirit, self-spirit, and faith. Uh, yep. And it doesn't matter what, but it's all there. And when you, if I'm paraphrasing you, of course, so yep. correct me if I'm wrong, okay? but when you combine those in an honest way, authenticity, uh, you're in a, a zone, you know, a special That's right. space, and you you can do anything. You can write, you can talk, you can think, you create, and the time goes by. It could be an hour, it could be two hours, uh, and then, of course, it stops, and you have to find that again somehow. But you can't do it without that combination of being in a zone, of, of having a a magnetic appeal whereby those things happen, whereby you're not just believing in, in God, you're feeling it. It doesn't matter who or what type of that. It, it's just all together. Like what Mark has been doing with fine neural health. He's, he's a living proof of Parkinson's uh, and what it does to families and people, unless yep. you take, or try to take control of that. Mark Colo has told me many times, you can't control it, don't try. But control Mark Victor illusion. Hansen, what, what, what do you say, Mark, about how much of life can be controlled through the positiveness of your attitude? Yeah, I think we all make choices and they're all difficult choices many, many times. And I think you really, have to rely on a higher power, a higher spirit to inspire you and lead you and guide you and help you in making those decisions. So I think one of the first things that I do every morning when I wake up is I'll get dressed, I'll walk down my, my stairs to the courtyard and I'll just sit down and have a prayer. And I just pray for a good day, pray that I can help somebody, be of service to somebody. And invariably, whatever I pray for, it happens. 
It's amazing. It just happens. Um, so I'm, I'm a big uh, believer in, in faith and in prayer. And I think both those things are essential in life. But I've just had so many blessings since I've been diagnosed. You know, people that hear I've got Parkinson's, they say, oh, man, that must be tough. That, that tremor you got, that seems like it's really hard to manage, you know. That's such a small fraction of what Parkinson's does to, to the human body. There's about 32 functions that are impacted by Parkinson's disease. It's just an insidious disease when you think about it. Um, but at, at the same time, I've learned so many things from the challenges that I've had and the trials I've had. I've learned some just irreplaceable lessons, wonderful lessons. Um, I'll give you a couple, one, one example of that. Um, I got, well, I've got five credos that I, that I like to follow. I'll just tell you real quick. First one is um, control. Uh, con, um, the only constant is change. So embrace it. I mean, because change will happen in your life and you just have to adjust it, embrace it and move on. It's just, it's, it's, it's a matter of why we're here is to change. That's why we came here. Um, the second is uh, control. Um, if you think things can't get worse, you're wrong. Uh, it's a slippery <laughs> slope at times, and it, 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 it's true. I mean, you can really, one thing leads to another. You lose a job, you can't pay bills, you suddenly get in debt. It, it just, it's just like a slippery slope sometimes. Uh, and then the other one is, um, through it is control is an illusion. You know, we all think that, that you know, we can control everything around us. And, and I think the tougher childhood, if you had a tougher childhood, you're even more apt and prone to try and control things because things were so out of your control when you were little. And I won't get into that today, but, but uh, I, had a, I had a train wreck of a childhood. It was a very difficult childhood. Uh, and my other credo is life isn't always fair. Uh, and it's not, you know, sometimes the good, it rains on the, the, the just and the unjust and, and the evil and, and, the, and good people. It's just, it's, it's, it's indiscriminate. So, um, and then my last one is, um, there are no no coincidences in life, uh, just miracles. And learn to see the miracle because things will happen in your life. You say, well, wow, what a coincidence. But it's really more than that. It's divine intervention. I really, I really feel that. Um, and I'll say one more thing and then I'll pa pass it back to you, Ed. Um, I've had a wonderful career. I've done so many things in this career that are unique. I've moved... Uh, Film libraries off UCLA campus to Santa Clarita moved 330,000 um, reels of film, Kodachrome film. Didn't miss, a, didn't lose a single reel. Uh, and I've, I've moved uh, focus on the family uh, from Pomona, California to Colorado Springs. I moved 700 families. I moved their broadcasting studios and all kinds of parts dealing with that ministry. They were in five different buildings in Pomona. And, and then uh, World Vision was fun. I moved them from Monrovia to Federal Way, Washington. And I moved another small group called Maranatha, Maranatha Music. So I was kind of like the ministry mover, you know, at, at real, for relocation. I own two relocation management companies. And then at the end of that, that, that my career, about the last five or six years. Edward's breaking up six a lot. I focused up. almost solely on real And yeah. the first scientist I found is Mark. Can you hear me? No. Yeah, Mark, uh, okay. with, there's some well, reduction. Uh, there's, a, there's a connection on your end that's a little weak. Uh, so you've okay. been breaking up. So we, uh, we'll probably. I've got four uh, bars. So if it's just me, then keep going. I just no, didn't want no, the audience no, not to hear Mark. Okay. It's Mark Marcolo. So Marcolo, we we might have you come back and re-record okay. uh, this little section uh, where you're talking about the, the the last of the four things, okay? Uh, okay. And we'll we'll splice it back in. Sure. Um, our editor will take care of all that. He's a wizard. And okay. so I want to turn now to you, Mark, <laughs> and and based upon what. Uh, Mark Mark Hansen, uh, based upon what Marcolo was just talking about, combined with uh, maybe you can transition into uh, the book on Ask, uh, if you can get into that a little bit more, uh, and and you know I want you to 
use us uh, for PR for your book. Um, and Certainly. I also want you to describe what you think uh, the energy orbit is, is all about. I mean, I have my own thoughts, but I think you are the leader here today, not me. Well, first of all, let me hitchhike on everything that Marcolo just said. I agree with all five points. Uh, the last one he said is that Einstein said either everything's a miracle or nothing's a miracle. And uh, like I'm in the same position that everything's a miracle. And as for um, all the spiritual work he's done, I know every one of those organizations are all doing phenomenal amount of work. So my hat's off to you. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and back to the one other principle, there are no mistakes or, you know, when I did chicken soup for the Christian soul, the first story I did was there's um, <clears throat> no coincidences, which you go, oh, wait a second, this is crap happening to me. Why would I have that? Well, you know, big G's got a different position than you do it and you need something like I didn't want to go bankrupt because I wanted to kill myself back in 1974, which is where I'm going to go back to based on what you said, Ed. Um, I'd been tried, been in graduate school, the smartest guy on the planet at the time, Bucky Fuller, he finished Einstein's unified field theory and then uh, geodesic domes, 40 major books. And I spent seven years with a guy as a research assistant. And I tried to be him. I built the Wall Street Racket Club, Botanical Gardens, aviaries in New York City. And you all know Frank Sinatra song, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. So I thought, I am one hot dude, baby. I'm 26 <laughs> years old and I am smoking. <laughs> and and uh, the oil embargo hit, just like we couldn't see COVID coming, COVID confinement cocoon, which if you want, we can talk to that. But the same thing hit and oil price went up and, and uh, I was buying $40,000 a month worth of PVC plastic to build these buildings. And suddenly I couldn't have any. They'd give me none because it seemed like to me I was a big user, but to them I was a pipsqueak. And uh, I immediately uh, had to go to the biggest library in the world, New York Public Library, and I Ask the wrong question because you get whatever you ask for, positive or negative. So it's imperative that you discipline yourself. And it is a discipline of spirit to ask positive questions on a full-time basis of how you can find a solution, not how you can find a problem and make the problem bigger and worse. And so I go check a book out of the library, how to go bankrupt by yourself and lickety split, I went bankrupt. Oh. Not knowing that was going to be my best, worst experience because it got me out of trying to be who I shouldn't be and into who I should be. Everyone's got a vibrational countenance. Everyone's got, as the subtitle says, a destiny for them. And, and our job is to have everyone read the book so they can find their own destiny and then go fulfill it. And I'm convinced Mark Colo's fulfilling his destiny. And Ed, you're fulfilling your destiny. You know, you, you're standing on the edge of greatness with all the ad advertising you've done your whole life. So Congratulations to both of you. In our case, I, I uh, prayed, meditated, and I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And, and what we're saying in the book is, if you don't know your destiny and you don't get the book, you can watch it online and see anything you want. But ask yourself 400 times before you go to sleep, push back sleep and say, God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? Or when Jack and I were writing the whole Chicken Soup for the Soul series, we kept saying, um, Mega best selling title, mega best selling title, mega best selling title. And Jack calls me up at four o'clock, sorry, 258 in the morning. Back then there was no cell phones, woke up the whole house, and, and we the little daughter was becoming a veterinarian. Not a really cool thing to do. And the animals all went crazy. 88 animals on one acre in Newport Beach. And he said, chicken soup, and as you know, it's Jewish penicillin. And I said, for the soul, and we knew we had it. And then 144 publishers all said, Hit the road, Jack. And I said, look, it's okay if you don't like him, but I'm a nice guy. That's not true. He's, <laughs> He's, great. He's great, but it's funny. And I think humor is important. So, um, you know, we did the, and then New York Times wouldn't take us. We're selling 20,000 a week and they won't take us. And Jack had gone to Harvard third in his class, but he's actually, I, I don't know if I should do this on the air, but he's, he's actually shy. He's a genius. But he's a shy genius. You know, he's an introvert the inside guy and I'm the outside guy. I think you can tell that, right? I just, a upper vest, I think. Anyhow, so Jack said, well, I don't have the courage to call her. I said, she's in your class. There's only 500. Everybody in Harvard knows each other. You call her. He said, no, no, no. Yeah, you know, he didn't want to get despoiled. So I said, good, I'll call her. I'll call anybody. I don't care. And that's exactly what Marcolo is doing to solve the problem for people that can't solve it for themselves. And, and that's a sub point I want to make is that when you help somebody else in their healing, your healing gets effectuated. He has this disease, and I don't wish it on anyone, and I'm sorry about Parkinson's. I got it. You know, we raise a lot of money for the foundation here with Muhammad Ali and all that here in Arizona where we live. So I'm really keen in what the problem is, what it looks like, and what we do about it. But the point is, 
I call this lady and she says, sir, you are a multi-authored book. And mentally I'm going, yeah. <laughs> she says, we at the New York Times. She's very pompous, arrogant, sophomoric. And I said, you don't take multi-authored books. She's absolutely not. I said, you're positive. She said, I'm positive. I said, my dear, you got the Bible in there. It's got 66 books. If we add maps of 720, she said, boy, you're in next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so back to the point, Ed and Mark, is that asking is always the answer. Yeah. Even when you're confronted and life confronts you because it's your belief system that is under a full-time attack, a full-time test, a full-time confrontation. And and because I know that Mark Colo is uh, biblically a scholar, the Old Testament story, which you know too, Ed, is Joseph is a many color coat. He went through the hellacious life. I won't go through all the points. I can if you need to, but the last line is a critical one in Genesis. Uh, it says, what you meant for my harm, God meant for my good. Now, when you're going through ugly times, you go, what? what? Come on, big guy. This is not what's supposed to be happening. Where's the vibrational benefit? And you might not know until you get to the other side. I can't answer that. But the point is, you're here to have as much. Your Two words are throughout, you know, the Christian Judaic full Bible. And that is, you know, fear not is 365 times and be in joy is 365 times. And you got to be joyous, even though you're going through a, a shaky experience, if you don't mind my summarizing a little bit of what you're experiencing. Sure. Well, that's a great statement. I love that. I, I, I'd ask you to repeat it, but uh, uh, but I just uh, that resonates with me. Everything you said resonates with me. Yeah, well, every, every by the way, he, Ed, here's what happens. Everybody thinks when they're getting hit, when they're getting pounded, when they're getting smashed, when they're getting <clears throat> their solar plexus, kick you're going i'm the only one the world's against me my wife's against me my husband's against me my father doesn't like me my wife the kids mother uncle yeah. grandma whoever it is the teacher the professor whatever we all have i don't know your story at all ed but i guarantee you somebody besmirched you during your life isn't that a nice big word more, somebody, more than one <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and, and look you're still smiling and that's the point because you got to get through it because what I've learned by doing Robert Ike's book is he said, there's only two opinions that matter. Yours of you, because your self-awareness, back to what you asked, is, is you got to work on your self-awareness. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? And then you go to self-expression by doing it. And that's exactly what Mark Colo is doing for all these other people. Then you go to self-mastery where you master whatever you're doing. Like I, I pretty much mastered the book business. And, and, then, and then you go to self-realization where, you know, you're in alignment with God back to something you'd asked four questions ago when you're in tune with the infinite and your conscious subconscious superconscious and God conscious are in alignment pretty much you're invincible you can pull off miracles that that other people would say how do you do that like my wife is is a master's master I mean um can I give one little example of that sure so uh the mother-in-law could not get tickets from United Airlines to do this flight. It says, Crystal, you can always do that. Crystal gets on the phone and gets the tickets like that for the lowest price ever. She says, how do you do it? It's because Crystal's attitude is set up. And when I saw her years ago, this fits two things that we've covered here and, and what Mark uh, Polo was covering a second ago. And that is, first of all, when Crystal and I were falling in love, we're at, back in Costa Mesa eating a nice green meal at uh, Mother's Market. And a man of the cloth is 92 years old sitting next to us. And he says, I can't help but see how in love you two are. Do you mind if I tell you what is the only thing that will keep you married forever? I didn't want to talk to this guy at all. I'm in love. What the heck do I need you for, Bubba? He says, look, I've been head of Billy Graham's uh, relationship seminars for uh, 72 years. I'm 92 years young. I said, wow. I said, okay, tell me what keeps a marriage together. I never heard this line before. He said, a husband and wife have to pray out loud together morning and night. Now, we prayed in groups, prayed in church, prayed at Holy Man Jams or whatever you guys call them in, in different parts of the world because we travel around the world. Or, you know, Different groups have different names on it. It doesn't matter. But now there's not a day that Chris and I don't wake up, including this morning, and that we don't pray together. And we not only visualize to realize what we really want but we want to realize it for our kids our grandkids and, and some of our kids as we're making this some of our kids uh two of the adult kids and three of the grand uh, six grandkids are 
in uh, vacationing in Costa Rica, as it turned on, we put, you know, white light around it because, by the way, there's only one mind, there's only one God, there's only one Father by a multiplicity. The biggest rabbi in L.A. wrote a book called 367 Names for God, and I know respectfully understand in Judaism, we're not supposed to do the name above all names, but it, this guy wrote the book. I didn't write the book. The rabbi, and I won't mention his name in case he gets in trouble. But the point is this father said, hey, look, you got to pray out loud. It, it, it goes along with what you said, Mark, is that you guys pray. I don't know if you pray out loud, but behooves, there's no downside to it that we've experienced over decades. Yeah, that, that praying out loud is, is huge in, yeah. in a marriage relationship. I mean, yeah. And, and by the way, I, if, if I've never said this before, but do you, you guys each comment, but I would bet only one in a hundred do it because they don't know that. It, and that's why I'm holding up a mirror and saying, hey, look, if you set the vibration that you're talking to God in you and God in the heavens of, of the universe and it's everything is vibration and everything is in the ethers and you watch the new Einstein movie on Prime and it shows even that from a scientific point of view and he was totally spiritual. And always right. Jewish. And that's why he had to leave Germany and come to America. And thank God he did. Hi, this is Ed. And I thank you for tuning in to Global TV Talk Show, a uh, unit on globalbusinessnews.net. Uh, we uh, broadcast to the world, as you know by now. So I wanted to make sure that you understand that our programs are advertising supported. We're grateful for co-sponsors, advertisers. Um, they have a marketing budget coupled with a strong desire to be associated with our top quality program. And of course, I'm grateful. Thank you. So for the next few minutes, you're going to see some uh, commercials. It's uh, mostly very low key. And uh, our prices are very, very reasonable. Uh, our exposure for the advertisers go 12 months and beyond. Some of our advertisers have been with us since March, April uh, of 2020. And Google Analytics has tracked uh, over 125,000 what they call audience page views, which means you looking at this page, that's a page view. Now, if you happen to go to one of our other shows or to our radio broadcasts or to our newspaper or magazine, those become additional page views as measured by Google and analytics. And so when they say 125,000 since uh, spring of 2020 up through uh, Labor Day a month ago, that's pretty good numbers. And uh, the past 30 days, Google Analytics has measured uh, just under 6,000 audience page views. Uh, and that, according to them, is a 42% increase in audience participation over the month of August. So thank you very much. Well, here's our advertisers. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes or so. And we'll proceed with this interesting conversation. Thank you. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. And by airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing on the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at Cross Culture To Go. 
www.thepeopleshow.com. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. Hi, I'm Sergei Gorbatov. I'm Angela Lane. Together we are researchers, writers and practitioners in the field of human resources. And we've also been multi-country, multi-assignment career experts. We owe our professional development and growth to a very large extent to the international assignment opportunities that we have had. But in a world where distributed work may become the norm, we also want to understand what happened to the nature, duration and purpose of international assignments. Together with our colleague Julian Dalzell from the University of South Carolina, we're undertaking a study on the future of expatriation. And we value your contribution. You can participate in this important study by completing a simple 10-minute questionnaire. Access the questionnaire by typing in your browser tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. That's tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. You can also find the link here on Ed's website next to this video. Thank you for joining us in this study. In return for your contribution, we'll provide you with a copy of our research. And of course, you'll be invited to an exclusive webinar hosted by Ed, where we will share our findings right here on Global Business News. And so please go to tinyurl.com forward slash expat study. Take the survey so that we can better understand the future of expatriation. Well, let's circle back. Vibrations in, yeah. in this regard. Um, Talk about vibrations. You mean you're you're thinking it, but you're feeling it, and you're living it. Uh, is that is multi level vibration? Yeah. When I, I'm nine years old, my dad takes us to Denmark because my parents, as you know, are Danish. Came out of Hitler's Germany because my uncle, 14 years older than my dad, created a black band to take all the Jews into Denmark, and and Hitler had a hundred thousand dollar hit on every family member. I don't know if you know that story or not. I had no idea. And yeah. In fact, so, so, yeah. In fact, my, my life partner, Joanne, her family's from, from Denmark. Yeah. So there you go. So, so Uncle Sven gives a hundred dollars, which is big money back in, in the late thirties. Right. 
and, and gives a passport to my dad, who's 14 at the time. So this isn't like an easy deal, right? You're going to America, you don't speak English, you don't know anyone, you got no friends, you got no connections, and you got a trait of a, being a baker. Anyhow, gets here, ended up doing okay. N never made real money because he didn't have the training that my brothers and I have all got because he gave us the foundation said, you guys are gonna earn it on your own. Point is, is it every one of us is gonna grow through adversity and, and each of us is supposed to have an evolution. Now, takes us to Denmark, I get addicted to low handlebar racing bicycles. My dad didn't have a chance of paying for that. He didn't, he wouldn't make any money. You don't make money at five cents a roll. It's not in the cards. Unless you own Inman's Bakery, then you can afford anything, right? But the point is, he, I said, Dad, can I have it if I earn it myself? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But pride of ownership follows pride of ownership. So never thinking, in today, the kind of bike I wanted is a Trek. They're $4,800. A nine-year-old can't turn that kind of money. It was, back then, it was $175. I, I, I'm a Boy Scout becoming an Eagle. I, it says you can sell greeting cards on consignment. I said, that's it, man. I'm doing that. And, and I sold more than anyone. I sold 367 boxes in one month. Did I want to sell the greeting cards? No. I had a picture on the wall, ride a wheel on Sheffield Steel. And and uh, and dad took half the money and said, it's going into your college fund because you, like I've told your brothers, you're all paying your own way through. Dad hadn't got any money, so you're it. You're, you're self-sufficient. You're going to learn how to do this. And I thought, wow, what a cool idea that is. Anyhow, so I bought a new bike every year in addition to giving half that money to savings. But the point is, is it, First of all, I knew what I wanted and, and I equivalently had it written down. I had a third. So figure out what you want. Number two point to get a vibration going. You've got to have it writing. It's got to be specific and you've got to have another person committed. Three, you've got to visualize to realize it because your mind is 87% visual. And that's what in this book we're teaching. Look, here's your mind visual. We need you to work on your mind and it's got to have linearity of thought to get the vibration succinct. And once it's succinct, voila, it has to show up. And then number four, is you got to have a team to get your dream. And obviously I, I sort of teamed up with um, Gibson greeting and became their number one greeting guard salesman in front of boys life, all that stuff at nine, which didn't mean squat to me. All I wanted was a bicycle. Just to fast forward 30 years later, as you know, I'm the biggest guy in licensing of books because that's what I wanted to do. And I've done a billion dollars worth of licensing. Gibson flies in and says, I want you and Jack to uh, write greeting cards. And, and we sold 897,000 boxes a year at grocery stores. So the point is, is that it, it, life goes full circle and the vibration goes out. It's like when you drop a stone in the water, it's called the Doppler effect. It goes out, but it comes back, multiplied, magnetized, magnified. So that's why you got to have linearity of vibrational decision. In other words, you can want everything, but you got to want it sequentially. And yes, I got 15,000 goals in writing. But the point is, I, I don't try to do all of them at once. I do them. My wife and I agree with what we're going to get done. And, and, you know, I've written 318 best-selling books. And I will, the goal is really sell a billion. I've only sold a half billion. And I will sell it because I'm going to live. My goal is to live to be 127 with options for renewal. Because you, <laughs> the Bible says, Genesis 6-2, you've got to live 120 years. And it's supposed to be healthy and prosperous and all that but you got to put it in writing everyone says no no i got it in my mind not good enough so figure out what you want it's got to be in writing it's got to be visualized some picture that you own of what it's going to be i knew the bike the color all that stuff and then you got to partner with somebody and my parents didn't believe i'll get the bike so i couldn't partner with them and my little brother goes you're nuts you're not going to ever pay that much money for a bike you kidding anyhow so the, 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 and i'm not besmirching my little brother who's a you know, very good at what he does, but it, it uh, does it make sense? Was it clear enough? Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, motivational. I, I, I love what you said about linear, uh, mean a straight line. It's, it's, that's like like connecting the dots. <laughs> exactly. And it, it actually, to, to really work, universe only is strong when it, Bucky taught me, when it triangulates, right, this angle stabilizes this truck. So it's got to, at least the three things, if not the four things. And if it's four things, then it becomes a tetrahedron. Probably more geometry than you guys would want, but it, 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 <laughs> it's the truth of the universe. I didn't, I don't set up any of the truths. So all I do is, and it doesn't matter who says the truth. The truth is the truth, no matter who says it, if it's the truth. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sense. So um, tell me about energy orbit. So each of us, you know, comes in with a certain energy signature 
And the goal back to destiny is find what the heck is your energy signature? Like my energy signature was not to be Bucky Fuller, right? I got swept up. I mean, here's the guy who's got 15 doctorates at Harvard, 110 honorary doctorates, is just the most important guy. And, and when I'm working with him, we're talking in India at the Red Fort. And, you know, you get, holy cow, man. I, but I'm not supposed to be Bucky. I'm supposed to be Marky, right? You're supposed to be Ed. He's supposed to be Mark, right? That's the way it works. And, and, but the point is, most of us never spend our time doing what, back to the linearity or the triangulation, most of us say, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a communicator, you're going to be an advertiser, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a, a garbage man. None of those are wrong, but that's a thing you do. That's not who you are and who you're supposed to, because exactly. what we said in the last part of the book is, you are here to be a human becoming. And if you're, most people that are listening to this show are so far along, the last question we ask in the books from our colleague and friend, Dr. Peter DeManis, Harvard and uh, MD and under and uh, doctorate of engineering from, and, and what he says, he and, he and Ray Kurzweil, who I just did a program with, says, what are you going to do during this decade to positively affect 1 billion people? Well, I'm going to positively affect a billion people because I'm going to cause the universe to be able to read. 4 billion people can't read. And I'm going to get him out of that. And, and Mark, I don't know what your thing is, but you know, you need to get everybody that's got like what you got to decide to go help somebody else because it's in helping. It is the greatest, right? The big guy's sitting at dinner and, and they say, how do you become great? He said the greatest monkey you servant of all. And Dr. Martin Luther King said, uh, I got to do a speech at his church on his birthday not long ago. Anyhow, he said, uh, every one of us can be great because you can serve greatly. And that's what vibration is about is, are you serving at your highest and best? And, and I'm going to do just one other aside. And that is, a lot of people retire way too early. Well, I got a lot of money, so I can retire at 35 or 55 or 72 and a half. Mm, you're not going to be happy. <laughs> so uh, I get on this a uh, daily dose of Peter. And so, you oh, know, good. today's, you know, today's about gratitude, rocket oh, fuel, for, rocket fuel for entrepreneurs. Right. That's the title. I haven't read it yet. But it's at, you brought it up, and it's right here. So well, gratitude uh, gives you altitude in business of life, and I'm sure that Peter and I are in total alignment on that. I mean, we're working with a lot of the same people right now. It's 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 astounding how often he keeps showing up. And my experience that he's working with Joe Polish here in Arizona, or he's working with everybody. We got a lot of the. I got to be careful here. We got a lot of really good thinkers here in Arizona. How's that? Yeah. That's that's cool. I'm uh, very familiar with Paradise Valley area too, and Stone yeah. Creek Golf Club is right next door. Yes. Absolutely. So, yeah, so very familiar. This has been a delight, and I'd like to have you come back on our talk show someday. Uh, well, but you also want to have before my wife we close, on this, well, bring her on. <laughs> she, she's way brighter than her husband. I'll tell you. <laughs> They usually are. <laughs> so, um, Mark, um, Mark Hansen, about half of our audience is is uh, women in business, all right, and under the age of forty. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, specific advice. The floor is yours. You have the mic. Well, it turns out that women are the best readers. So that's who I've written for my whole life. 87% of all books sold are, are to women. And, and what we've just done is started, two guys came to me and said, hey, look, you've done the hard market selling a half billion books. How'd you like doing easy market? I said, get out of here. There's no easy market. And they said, yeah, fiction. Last year during COVID, it did 47 billion. So long story short, we, six months ago, we started the Mark Victor Hansen Library.com. It's a publishing house. It's a library because I said, look, the first library, you know, is Alexander the Great. I mean, he conquered the known world, you know, Socrates trained Plato, playing Aristotle, trained Alexander the Great. They created the library in Alexandria, Egypt. Long story short, my hero, Andrew Carnegie, who started 2,509 libraries in America, built that. I said, I want to do library 3.0. And we're going to make sure everybody has access to not only the books, the audio, the video, 
and, and the metaverse, because this is the direction we're going and every woman there needs to know the metaverse is going to be able to back to vibration, dimensionalize stuff, just like you watch the movie Iron Man, but it's now going to come out of your phone. And that starts in January, which some people are going to be listening to this and go, oh, that's old hat. I've known that for a long time. But when we're making this, it's not old hat. It's brand new in the last couple of months. So we're in an exquisitely exciting time. It is the most transformational time in history because we brought up Demandus. I'll just say that he, like I and like Bucky, believe that technology can create fundamental abundance. I own natural power concepts. And, and we believe that you got to have the energy to have the water, to have the food, to have the abundance. It won't get rid of the wackadoos. We're going to have them. But if, if you got real leadership that is trained in stuff like you're training here with good morality and good philosophy and good ethics, then the people become no limit, fully functioning, self-actualizing, self-realizing people. Remember, it's self-awareness, I believe, self-expression, self-mastery to self-realization. I've got a practical ground level thing that I'd like to share with you. Sure. And I'd like your, I'd like your take on it, okay? Go ahead. So I, I'm wondering why, but not to think backward, but to look forward, when can there be a pipeline system to bring water to the West from New Orleans and Miami and the Great Lakes into LA and Phoenix, Arizona, um, and charge the heck out of it because it's the new oil. And, you know, why are we wasting time? Why aren't the pipeline companies building this already? So, so two answers different than you're going to expect. One is, if you go look at the videos we got at Natural Power Concepts, we got a pulsating wave system that was invented by the Leonardo da Vinci at time, who, you know, I'm chairman of the company and biggest owner, but John Petrie, the world's greatest surrealist artist, he's got 248 inventions and we're working with everybody like Caterpillar and everybody. But when you pulsate, the water pulsates seven different directions, but when it does, it creates so much pressure that it goes through. And first of all, we get rid of the salt and the salt goes into the current. So it's not going to clog it up like in Israel. The guy who did in Israel was in graduate school with me and I love him, but they got piles of salt and it's dangerous because it'll screw up the land and stop growth and everything. So that's number one, but it, it, it gives you water, clean, pure water that has so much energy. We can shoot it back to the, to uh, the driest place. Is that the Mojave desert? I think I'm doing the right name of the desert. If not, I apologize. And we could have bladders of water and grow all that we need because my wife and I had a, a month uh, writing experience and running a mansion in Pismo beach at, during the summer. And every sign in growing uh, Fresno and Bakersfield said the same thing. Water's got to flow for crops to grow. If we want to keep eating, we got to have pure green water. And, and I'm on the board of Wylands Foundation, and I wrote the first line, every drop of water has got to be a clean drop. That's number one. Number two, here in Arizona, there's a guy in material science, uh, Dr. Cody, and, and what he's done is he's got zero mass water, which you can look up online. And every morning, the world wakes up with 15 trillion gallons of water. And we've never decided to take it out of the atmosphere. If you, did you see the movie, The Gods Must Be Crazy, years ago? No. Right. It would Go look at it. It's on, on Netflix. Anyhow, and I'm going to try and sell Netflix or anything else. But in Africa, they just take water off the leaf. And they get enough water. They get their eight glass of water off the leaf early in the morning because there's always dew and moisture and water. You've seen it when you've walked out in the morning, early morning, if you ever get up early. Yes. And, and the point is... We can take all that moisture out of the air, and now we do it cost effectively for the first time. So we don't have to drag all that water up. That's that. And then the last thing is one of my mega goals is we plant, to get rid of the pollution, we plant one trillion trees. Now, to do that, it's easy. Everybody's got to plant three trees. In Israel, if you die, you got to plant a tree. If you're born, I say differently, you got to plant a tree. If you ever fell in love, you got to plant a tree. Now, if you're a serial lover, you owe it to us to plant the forest. But it that would be easy to plant 15 trillion trees. And because I happen to like Johnny Appleseed, we ought to grow growth oriented trees, meaning fruit bearing. So everybody has more than enough to eat because, you know, I live in a desert and water makes everything here bloom and we get fresh. In case you didn't know, Arizona is the crop growing place. We got five seas. We got cactus. Of course, we got climate. Of course, we got cattle. Of course, we're the, now the biggest cotton grower. And then I throw my wife in there. We got Crystal, of course, because she is a, a formidable force in our great state. 
So let me also mention that I'm in touch with a, a scientist, an inventor, who yeah. is from, from uh, um, Glendale, Arizona. Yeah. And uh, he's a research scientist, and he is yeah. develop and developing right now a way to uh, energize um, water from under the Buckeye uh, area that's very salty right now. And he's developed an electrolysis system of some kind uh, that doesn't use energy, but it's uh, uh, some kind of a system that he's developed. And I'll send you, uh, if I may, I'll send you an email yeah, please. with a link to the pro to the program I produced with him so that he explains what he's doing. And it's brilliant, uh, a way to take the salt out of the water that's underground uh, the Buckeye area of uh, Maricopa County. Well, first of all, I'm close friends with the mayor out there. He's been mayor 12 years, little Jackie Mac. But the problem in Buckeye, we got 600 million gallons of water, enough for the next thousand years, no yeah. matter how big our population and, becomes. And it's little. full of Full of heavy salt, right? Yeah, because what happened is they kept pouring it in. The problem isn't that we don't have the water. The problem is we got, I, 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 can I do a political besmirchment? We got politics screwing this up. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's like, let me just do it from the gold that was discovered in the, at uh, that shipwreck, that $8 billion worth of gold. All of a sudden, the state of Florida said, I own it. The Spaniard said, I own it. The guy who found it said, no, I own it. All these guys are saying we own the water. And instead of saying, look, let's just divvy it up. There's enough water to do money forever. And we could be shipping it to California or shipping it to Mexico. We got, there's only sufficient. And when I was a Mahatma Gandhi scholar in India, Gandhi's biggest line, as far as I'm concerned, we can argue that, but is there's enough for everyone's need, but not enough for anyone's greed. Oh, good. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I thought I like what McGordney, which means great fit it. This is yeah. delightful. Hey, Mark Colo, thanks for arranging this. You bet. Thank you, you bet. Mark. So thankful that you can make it, Mark. Really My it. delight. Enjoy I hope coming. you guys have enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. A wonderful. Yeah, so uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, so you our too. editor is going to uh, have some work to do here. So it probably takes three or four days and then we'll get this over to you perfect and i'm and i'm going to broadcast it from uh, globalbusinessnews.net connecting to our youtube channel and um, it's wonderful to have you thank you hey, my pleasure my pleasure have an enjoyable thank enjoyable enjoyable thanksgiving mark and dad you too you too mark Good. stay in touch you too okay. thanks you gentlemen bye -bye. thank you thanks bye-bye bye -bye. Ciao. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.